Hey guys, today's video is on the Coleman slide. Now the Coleman slide is a fundamental slide. It's going to be key for controlling your speed and it's going to build the foundation for all the other heel side slides that you're going to learn. Now this guide I'm making is part of a bigger downhill skill progression guide and so far on that guide I've made other stuff and yeah this guide builds off the progress and the experience you gain from following the other guides so highly recommend you check those out as well. Okay, so first things first, what is a Coleman slide? A Coleman slide is a slide invented by Cliff Coleman. It's named after him. It's also known as a shutdown slide or a heel side slash front side pendulum slide. It's basically a hands down slide where you swing 180 degrees and back. Now, before we get into the guide, there's some other things that you should already know how to do. One of them being how to turn on your longboard, how to carve, how to slow down through either foot braking or through a push up or a shutdown slide. And you should also know how to set up curve for a slide. The setup curve especially will be key for braking traction. And if you can't do it, it's gonna make your life very hard. So yeah, highly recommend you check out the other guides, link in the description, and they should help you make progress with this slide and make your life easier altogether. Okay, so the first two steps are gonna be on foot positioning and body positioning. Now I've already made a guide that talks about that stuff. It's called things to do before you learn how to slide your longboard. That either be, I think here, I'll link it here. So yeah, talk about foot positioning, where to place your feet. And then I also talk about body positioning, where your weight should be on your foot, how to blah, 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 and all that good stuff. So I highly recommend you check that out. I don't really want to repeat myself and make this video any longer than it needs to be. I also talk about flexibility and challenges that you might have with that. Now, flexibility is key for doing the heel side slide. And if you can't do an ass to the grass squat properly, you're going to have a little bit of trouble with it. But if you can get in the box position semi comfortably, uh, then you're good to go. You can learn the heel side slide. OK, OK, so the first step for this is you're going to want to have enough speed. The Coleman slide kills a lot of speed, so you're going to want to be going pretty fast. I really recommend learning this slide on a hill. You can't really push in fast enough to get a, the right amount of speed to learn this slide. But yeah, and if you can already shut down slide or rather push up slide, and if you can foot brake, then you should have no fear of going fast as you have methods to slow yourself down. So yeah, make sure you have a moderate amount of speed when you're learning the Coleman slide. I think faster than jogging pace or rather like speed pace might be a good amount of speed. So the second step is you're going to want to set up curve. And when you get to about this point of the setup curve, you're going to want to get into the box position. And at the end of this step, you're going to want to end up in a position like this, where you're just about to kick the wheels out or basically you're in the position where your hand is on the ground and you're, yeah, basically this position. Okay, so step three is the actual slide. So when you get to this point of the setup curve, you then want to start doing the things that are gonna initiate the slide. Now, what you're gonna do to initiate the slide is you're gonna start reaching out with your hand and turning your shoulders almost 180 degrees. Now you want this movement of you reaching out and turning your shoulders to be sudden and firm, almost like you're swinging your shoulders out. Now, this should make the board want to rotate and turn or rather want to slide. So you see, the rotating of your shoulders should get the board to break traction. The movement of your shoulders affects how your board moves in a slide. Basically, your hips tend to follow your shoulders, your legs tend to follow your hips, and your board tends to follow your legs. So any movement you make with your shoulders ends up making the board rotating. So yeah, finally, when you rotate or rather swing your shoulders slash body, you do it until there's no more traction or to the point of breaking traction. You don't force the body into the slide. You encourage it by rotating slash swinging to the point of traction. You basically swing so hard that the board loses traction. And if your body is in the right position, if you're in the box position properly, if your weight is in the right places, this will be controlled. But yeah, doing this should swing your body and the board about 180 degrees. And yeah, you basically get into the slide. 
Okay, so let's quickly troubleshoot this step. So if you're doing everything else correctly, you have enough speed, your setup carving and the box position. If you're having trouble getting the board to slide out, I highly recommend being more aggressive with your shoulder rotation. And if that doesn't work, then throw your arm into the movement as well. Swing your arm out pretty hard and this should get the board to break traction. But yeah, swinging your arm out hard will get the board to slide, but it would result in the most controlled slide. It might be very sudden and kind of uncontrollable. I recommend practicing this for a while and then trying to dial back how hard you swing out your arm and trying to find like the sweet spot where you can swing out but still be in control or to the point where you don't really need to swing out but you can just use your shoulders. But also if you just need a little bit of extra help rotating the board, swinging your arm out lightly does help as well. Okay, so some key points for the slide. Now, I've also made an in-depth write-up for this. I highly recommend you check it out. It's more articulate, it's more thorough, and includes stuff from other guides and paints a more complete picture. So, highly recommend you check it out. And there's some details in there that I have not added to this video because I just don't want to be repetitive and there's another guides and blah, 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 blah. So, highly recommend you check it out. Okay, so some key points for this slide. You're going to want your front leg to be upright and stiff. You're also going to want to have most of your weight on there. If I had to do a distribution balance, it would be about 60 to 70 percent of your weight on your front leg, and then about to 20 to 30 percent on your back leg. Other than your hands, you're going to want to have anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of your weight. Finally, you're not going to be pushing out with your front foot, but rather really sitting on it, and you're going to want to have your weight near the middle or of your foot or rather on the heel. Finally, the firmer your front leg is, the easier this slide will be. You're not going to suddenly fall forward. Your back leg should also be really planted as well and should be really firm. Also, if you put too much weight on your back foot, you're likely going to high side and fall. So yeah, you need to keep most of your weight on your front foot and this should help the board to break traction in a controlled way. Another thing is if you're not sat properly on the board, if you're not planted, it's likely that you're going to fall forward, especially if you turn aggressively. Another thing is you want to look down the hill and straight down, no matter how much your body is swinging, just look straight down the hill and keep your head facing straight. Another thing is, I know I say rotate 180 degrees, but it's more like rotate to a shallow angle, maybe 135 degrees, you know, don't really go all the way to 180, just about shallow. And I talk more about this in the next few steps. So yeah, you should be able to do the common slide just by following these steps. And yeah, the common slide is more of a slide initiated by a turn rather than you forcing the board out with your legs. And yeah, you can't push the board out with your legs and get it to slide. But this usually results in a slide that's not very controlled and it's a bit inconsistent, which is why I haven't focused on that method. But yeah, at this point, with just a swing out, you should be able to get the board to break traction and you should be able to slide correctly. And yeah, just focus on sitting on the board properly and the rest shouldn't be too hard. The next key thing is getting the arm position correct. So as you're doing the 180 degree slide or 135 degree slide, right? You want to move your arm into this position. Now, if you have taken the step in the troubleshooting step where you swing your arm hard, your arm should already be in this position. But if not, you kind of want to rotate your arm at the same rate that your body is rotating over to this position. And yeah, this position is key for the next step. So it's really important that you do do it. Now, whilst you're here, I really want to quickly talk about grabbing rail. And once again, I'm going to bring in an old friend to touch on it and yeah, take it away. I quickly want to talk about grabbing rail on your board. Grabbing rail is just basically when you use your free hand to grab the board and this can be really helpful with balancing and can give you leverage over the board and can help you turn a little bit and can also help you stay on board as well. You want to grab over your back foot, not in between your legs. Grabbing in between your legs is called sting bug and it's bad because it puts too much weight on your back foot. And what this does, it limits your control and yeah, it's not very nice. And if you try it at high speeds, you'll actually get wobbles. It's best avoided. You want to grab over your back leg and what this does it naturally forces weight onto your front foot i personally think it's better to learn heel size without grabbing rail at all because for a lot of people grabbing rail is usually done for compensation because they have a lack of leverage or trouble staying on board which likely means they have bad form and bad weight placement and with bad form grabbing rail forces weight onto your back knee and this can really stress out your acl and mcl and other ligaments which can be damaging in the long term however if you can do grabbing rail with good form you know weight on your front knee with your knee no hurting at all then by all means go ahead Ahead. Okay, so now I quickly want to talk about are the steps to coal mining grabbing rail the same? Yes, they're pretty much the same. It's just 
when you grab the board is uh, the key difference. So basically in step two of the setup curve where you're crouching down, that's when you also grab the board. And some people like to crouch down and then grab the board or grab the board as they're crouching down. This really depends on what you prefer. But I think grabbing the board as you're crouching down gives you a better and smoother setup curve. So yeah, but pretty much the steps for coal mining with grabbing rail are pretty much the same. It's just you swing with your shoulders more and you hold on to the board. That's pretty much it's the same thing. Okay, so step four, the swing back. Now to swing back to the other side, all you have to do is throw your shoulders out to the other side or throw your arm out to the other side and the board should naturally swing back. And yeah, with the momentum from the swing back and the momentum from the swing, this should allow you to get back on board. Now, this will get you back on board, but not in the smoothest or controllable way. Now, we're going to be working on getting it really smooth in the next few steps. But yeah, now if you're having trouble rotating the board and getting it to swing back, swing your shoulders as hard as you can and this should get the board to come back. Now, two key tips for this step. When you swing back on your board, your feet need to be planted. Otherwise, it's going to be easy to slip off and either high side or low side and yeah this is especially true if you're grabbing rail if you're not planted it's going to be very easy for you to slip off the other thing that you need to make sure you have is a moderate amount of speed most people come to a stop when trying to swing back to the slide because they're not going fast enough the coleman slide kills a lot of speed so you generally need quite a bit so yeah the more speed you have the better results you're going to have generally Okay, so the next step we're going to be refining the swing back. So yeah, just rotating your arms and throwing your shoulders back does get the board to come around, but it doesn't result in the smoothest regaining traction. So what you need to do for the board to regain traction smoothly is, as you rotate hard with your shoulders, you should also lean onto your front foot simultaneously. In fact, rotating your shoulders hard should help with this leaning onto your front foot. You can imagine as though you're trying to bring your shoulder through the top of your front foot. So for example, because I'm a regular rider, I'm bringing my left shoulder over my left foot. And yeah, this should result in a smooth hookup into traction. Okay, so what's happening is as you're leaning onto your front foot, it naturally forces weight onto it. And it also brings your hand slightly closer to the board as you swing back. These two things result into a smoother transition into going straight because you'll be more on top of the board when you regain traction and your weight is going to be more over the front truck. And that just generally gives you better control. So yeah altogether smoother thing yeah <laughs> the next thing you can do for a smoother transition into going straight again is keeping your legs planted so as you swing back your back leg has a tendency to go up and yeah if this naturally means that you're going to be putting more weight on it and it results in a more like jittery hookup right so to prevent this you want to keep it locked in and yeah this should naturally put more weight on your front foot and should mean a smoother transition into traction. Now, if you can't do it, if, you, if it naturally doesn't want to be here and it wants to be here and you can't help it, fair enough. But if you can, it's going to be smoother. And yeah, that step was optional. So yeah, not for everybody. The next step is going to be refining the pendy. With the aggressive swing out and swing in, you're not always going to have the most control. So what you're going to do is you're going to practice you know swinging your arms aggressively then toning it down and really just trying to find the sweet spot where you have maximum control and you're just not really throwing yourself around the style i'd recommend actually is just swinging your shoulders into the slide and not your arm and then bringing your arm back and then doing the swing out these two things should result in a really consistent and controllable Coleman slide experience. I also really recommend pushing with your front foot out a little bit and really leaning into it when you're regaining traction. And yeah, that should give you a very controllable slide and all that good stuff. Once you can get the swing back consistently, you've basically accomplished Coleman slide, pat yourself on the back. I mean, yes, there might be some inconsistencies here and there and improvements to be made, but that's the gist of it. Now you could probably use this slide to get downhills and all that stuff but there is a way to go um i think next you should maybe focus on learning how to take corners or maybe learning how to toe side pendulum or maybe even learn some stand up on 80 slides but whatever it is you should be proud because you've accomplished common slides so before we end this video 
I really want to touch on issues with the common slide or rather co common issues. So the first is flexibility. The next is not having enough speed. The next is having wheels that are way too grippy that aren't going to slide very easily. The next thing is your body weight and foot positioning. So yeah, not being on top of the board, you know, being too far back or maybe having your leg in a weird position is really going to hold you back. So yeah, those are the most common issues for the common slide. Okay, so to kind of end this video, I want to leave you guys with some random tips. So the first one is be aggressive and confident. The next one is be aggressive with your arm swings. The next one is look where you want to go. Next one is a big setup curve should make the break into traction feel easier and smoother. The next is you should be going relatively fast. Without much speed, you're not going to be able to swing the board back from 180. So yeah, go fast. The next tip is try it in the rain. You might have a lot easier over time and you might learn quicker and learn faster. The next one is sometimes you might be doing everything correctly, but your board just sucks generally, sucks full stop and will hold you back. So highly recommend getting a board built for sliding. The next one is make sure you're planted with your front leg. The, bet the more you're planted, the better the results are going to be. And the last tip is, like I did say earlier, don't go all the way 180. Keep that angle really shallow. If you go fully 180, you're going to have a very hard time swinging the board back. In fact, the swing back is going to be a little bit less controllable if you're all the way 180 because it's going to have to be very sudden. But if you're at a shallow angle, it should be easier to bring the board back in a smoother and more controlled way. I'd say 135 degrees is optimal. And yeah. Okay, and the last thing that I want to touch on is pennies at an advanced level. Now, when you observe riders who have been in the game for a very long time and are skating very well and are very technical, you'll see that a lot of them don't actually swing their arms when they pendy. They control the pendy through their hips and their legs and where they position the weight and how much they pressure the board and all that good stuff. And what this does, it results in a more subtle kick out and hook up and it means you can slide in a more controlled way and slide in even like a more confined space. But yeah, these riders are experienced, which is why they're able to skate that way. And I think it's going to be a little bit challenging for a beginner to skate in this way and learn hillside pendulums in this way. I am going to do a guide later on like advanced pendies or whatever. Uh, so there's that coming soon or whenever it does come. But yeah, you know, of course there are a variety of styles. Some people will do a pendy similar to what I've outlined. But yeah, um, just don't look at the pros and try to always copy them. It might not always result in the best things for you. And yeah, that's basically the end of the video. Let me know if this guide was helpful and all that good stuff. And yeah, uh, a bit nervous about this one, not gonna lie. It's a bit difficult to make uh, the many ways to pendy, like I've outlined, uh, but I really think this is gonna be the best way. It is gonna be a bit challenging if you don't have the best flexibility, but it's honestly the best way to learn to pendy and the easiest, I think. Uh, I might be wrong about that to be honest, but yeah, let me know what you guys think as well If you want to see the other examples, I'll link in the description to a separate video so that this one isn't like super long or whatever and yeah